Five. Are we live? Three, two, one. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, guys, we're here. We're live. Today we got Dave here from Core BJ. Everyone knows Dave. Um, he's going to be my Uki today. And uh, if you guys haven't been checking out To The Death podcast, I definitely recommend it. Next week's episode should be pretty good. I already uh, got a little bit of a preview for we it. We gave Yanni a sneak peek. Since they talked about me too much, I'm not sure that uh, it was all good. <laughs> um, yeah, th this is actually a good time to like to be making some of this content so you guys can listen or watch. Um, we're going to be going over um, some attacks from a crucifix physician today, which kind of like leads into what we were working on Monday. On Monday, me and Ed were demonstrating some uh, some details on the Kimura, but using the Kimura to take the back. Sometimes you can use it to get the crucifix. So uh, I think today we'll probably just start off with um, with doing uh, just a crucifix from, from against the turtle first. All right. So Dave's going to be on his knees. So a lot of times we have to make sure that we're in good position. So first, my, my first basic position is always one knee parallel with his knee, other leg right behind. I always keep my foot on the a little bit on the outside. If I leave it between his legs, Dave can roll through for leg lock. So I want to be right here, hugging nice and tight. I don't need a seat belt yet because I'm behind him. If you get too high here, then if Dave lifts his hips up, I, I end up falling a little bit. So I want to make sure that I'm nice and tight here. And then I'm going to look to control, control his wrist right over here. I'm not doing a seat belt. I'm just looking to control his wrist. Then I'm gonna come up, bringing my knee inside, dropping my knee, and I wanna open his elbow away from his body like this. I'm just gonna walk it out, and then I'm gonna step right over. I touch my heel and my knee together, so I know that I can, I can get inside of his arm. And then I trap his arm. So if we look at this position, his arm is trapped with my leg on the outside. If this happens, it's a little different situation. You can do like a reverse omoplata. Maybe we'll get into that later. I know Dave was talking about how he wanted to go over that as well, but when ideally I want to trap it with this leg, because now I can start using my other leg to go behind him again. And now at this point, I start attacking the neck and I start taking his back. So this, I'm actually getting out of the crucifix to take his back because I already have his arm trapped. Here, sometimes I'll keep his arm and put my foot behind his back. I don't even need the hook here, and I can go right to a rear navel. So we're here. I'm nice and tight. I'm going to look for his, uh, for his wrist control. Obviously, if you can control the hand, it's a little bit better. Um, if you, get, if you can only get to the wrist, that's fine. I'm just looking to put, push it into his body here. I put my knee inside, and this other leg is posted. There's actually a problem when you bring both knees to the mat. All right, there's actually a counter from here. From here, if I keep both knees in the mat, Dave can actually tripod up and walk around my back. And he'll end up in side control. In fact, when we were breaking down, I think... Um, Roberto versus Lucas Barbosa, and and he Barbosa kind of did a similar thing, a counter when they when when they were on the feet because Roberto was like next to him like this trying to jump onto his back and and Lucas like was able to beat him to the position. So if you keep this leg posted out, it's much harder for him to walk behind me. If he tries to walk behind me here, I can use this leg to slow him down. Much heavier on me too. Yeah, I'm putting my weight on him. I take the hand, I pass it off. I start walk. If his elbow is in, like he doesn't want me to trap the arm, I'm just gonna start walking his elbow out. I'm eventually gonna be able to get over it, right over here. Come underneath, fall right to the side. And then I can start going for my rear naked. Boom. Very nice nogi move. I, I think I've been, uh, this is a technique I've been using and teaching way back, even back in uh, my blue belt days when I was teaching at uh, Enzo Gracie Denville. I, mean, I remember you hitting me, hitting this on me in Sunday Open Mat. Yeah, yeah. I've been using this a long time, something that Jamie's always taught. And 
The main thing is just getting to the position. Now, sometimes what ends up happening is um, the person starts defending. So what, what does he want to defend a little bit here? I, I managed to get to here. I managed to trap this way. So Dave's defense to anytime he has his back taken is to put his back on the mat. So he can only really go to go on his back one way. If he tries to go on his back towards me, he's giving me his back, right? So he's going to try to drop his right hip to the floor. And we're right over here. All right, so let's turn so that... I think we're a little too close. Let's back up a little bit. So I'm in this position. My outside leg is the one trapping. I want to trap close to the wrist, okay? I'm going to come here. My other hand is looking for his neck, but a lot of times if he starts getting a little bit low on me, it's where he can get, get his head to the floor, he's going to turn and then go like a double leg on me. He's going to grab both of his legs and try to get up. So how are we going to maintain this position? What I want to do is I want to open his arm up away from his body this way. Once I'm able, and my knee is blocking this inside space where his elbow can go. Then I'm going to drive my heel down right over here. Now this could be an arm lock. If I do this, you might even get a submission out of it real quick. But a lot of times, he's going to start lifting his hips up. This is when I start coming underneath him a little bit. So I'm using this to get underneath. If not, I'm, I'm just constantly attacking the arm and attacking the neck altogether. I don't really recommend who's fixed as a position in no gi to get the rear naked choke in. We got, a, we got a question? No, Lauren asked a question. Oh, nice. She wants you to show how Dave's elbow again from turtle, like when you were opening it up to get your knee in. Okay, yes. And when your leg is posted out in turtle, is there a threat of Dave being able to reach it? Well, no, no, I wouldn't reach for it because... So this is, a, this is actually a common mistake people make where, especially people with wrestling experience, they like the head outside single, right? In wrestling, this is great because he can use this to connect with a double leg and stuff like that. In jiu-jitsu, the problem is it opens up your neck too much. So I just put my hand in front and then I just lock and turn and now we're in the crucifix. So he's usually not going to. If he reaches, then I'm going to trap the arm right away. It's actually tougher when the person is keeping this arm in. So first, to get my knee inside, if he's got his elbow tight, I can always get inside just by finding this hole. doesn't matter how tight he keeps his elbow in, there's always going to be a space over his thigh and behind his elbow. So I come, I put my knee in, I post my leg, and I just kind of like slide down. Once I'm here, I just start bringing it away from his body, and now there's going to be space for my heel to come in. All right. If I keep my knee in here, and he's coming here, it's hard. Sometimes it's like reaching his arm, pulling it out becomes harder. So I just kind of start coming out. At this point, maybe I can push. But I don't even need to. I just have to get his elbow far enough away that I can touch here. As he tries to get his hand back, I just kind of block it. And then I, I, I catch his uh, wrist right over here. So you're kind of doing like a, the knee cut, hip to the floor kind of movement to yes. get his arm away. I'm kind of like, I'm here. I'm keeping my hip heavy. And I start walking it out, walking it out. It all comes down to like my whole weight fighting against this type of strength for Dave. Like Dave is I actually, can't keep my elbow in if I yeah. try. Once it's here, he can't get it. But when it's here, it's actually kind of hard. So that's why I work, I work it down. Work it down. Attack the neck, attack the arm a little bit. Start sliding it down. Then I step over and I come here. Dave starts dropping to his hip. So I roll, keeping a figure four. Continuing having this position right here. I have to understand that he wants to get low. As soon as his back touches the mat, he can he can turn into me. And I can't hold him down. So we always want to deal against someone who's very strong and explosive. And they know what they're doing. So what I want to, in order to make his neck more available to me, I'm going to have to attack the arm. So I, I walk, 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 lift. This puts a lot of pressure on his arm. Then I start coming underneath once again. I can put the hooks in, and that's like the first step in finishing, especially in no gi where you only have a few attacks, right? You don't have a collar, 
So in order to submit the person, you got to get the hand under the chin. If you trap the arm, it becomes a lot easier. Now they only have one hand in their chin, and you can start beating those, you know? So are you only attacking with the rear naked choke once you get onto the back? You don't ever attack the rear naked choke from the crucifix position? Usually, if I'm on my back, no. If I'm on top, possibly. Okay. So if I'm... If I have the crucifix and you're on your knees, and I'm here, and the person's chin is up, I will go for it. You can finish it right here. Okay. It's when I have the crucifix, and I'm on my back. For me to finish this, this is too, like you see the hole right here? Mm -hmm. It's huge. So as soon as I let go here, you're kind of asking for the person. Now, how do you feel about the one arm choke from there? Once again, it's not as strong. So if I okay. have a one-arm choke, let's actually go over the details of doing a one-arm rear naked. Usually, if I'm doing a one-arm rear naked, I'm like this, with my foot all the way across. I have the arm trap, I have this, I come in and then I start pulling back. Mm -hmm. This works because I'm able, you have no choice, you cannot escape in this direction because my foot is high. Okay. If I do this with the same position here, I start doing this, you slip right out. Okay. So a one arm, unless you get super deep and you get their shoulder, you block their, if your head's on the other side, block on the other side, which can happen. Like, I'm not going to say that no one can submit the person with a rear naked from a crucifix, but it's just so low percentage, I think, against someone that's comparable, you know? Okay. Um, and, and, and that's usually, like, the main way we're going to be getting it from someone turtling. And then looking for the uh, looking for the back and looking for the neck. Then we maintain it by attacking that arm and retaking the back. Another thing I like to do, this comes down to taking the back when I, when I have hooks, right? If I have a seat belt this way, a lot of times Dave goes to escape by removing this hook and then he st starts stepping over here. So I gotta keep my head tight and we get to this position. Now, I'm, I can usually get up, ideally I want to get up and retake the back. But if he starts getting his lower back on the mat, then my last chance is to come in and do what I just did. I open up the arm and see if I can trap it with my outside leg. I got to do it with this knee though, so right now, I'm here, right? He starts putting his back on the mat, I want to come here and block the arm. Then I want to step over, and then we can attack boom. So we can use the crucifix, not only as an initial attack, but as a counter to someone's proper escape. Okay. All right, so let's look at that again. We'll do it on the other side after this time. I'll have the seat belt this way. So Dave removes the bottom hook. I end up coming in with my right leg to pull his arm back. My left leg steps all the way over, and now I can... I control the arm. If I if I feel like he's a little bit low on me, then I just pull his arm away from me. It's, it pulls him onto me. That pressure on his arm actually makes his weight more on my chest. Then I can come underneath. It's kind of like an extension to most standard attacks. Really good. So the only finish that you're going for in the crucifix position is the arm bar with your leg? Yeah. Until I can get to the back, full back, then I'll go right to the rear naked. Okay. Um, that, that's the main way. It's kind of used like a good, like, like if you watch most matches, like they, they use it in between. And then with the gi, you, can, you have the choice for like the... Loop chokes. Loop chokes. Or the, I call it the single wing, you know, where okay. it's like the cross collar, but... That one's really strong in a crucifix position because you have the lapel, and you once again, you, once you come here, they don't have a they don't have an escape route okay. in this way. But using it like in combining it a lot with your um, uh, with your standard back attack uh, back attack really helps. Sometimes you can't get both hooks in, but if you trap their arm, then when they go to roll, you attack. Sometimes you get the tap on the arm. Sometimes you expose their neck and then put the hooks in and the, the final, you know, the final finish should be arm trapped rear naked. Okay. If you get a really good attack. And you want, <clears throat> you want the same finish in the gi. You want arm trapped rear naked or a cross collar. 
yes. hold his arm trapped. Yeah, absolutely. If you can keep the arm trapped, keep the arm trapped because um, even like the best guys can be stuck on the back for like three, four minutes. Uh, yesterday we were watching one of Mikey Musumeki's matches where he was on the guy's back for a while. He couldn't finish. He had a cross collar, couldn't finish. Finally, he got over the arm, trapped his arm for a second, got a stronger grip, and then finished. And okay. Just shows that like that trapping that arm is is big because if not, someone can just do this. Someone's really people are really strong like this, you know. But once you pull an arm away, now it's see how my body is like it's hard to like crunch like that, you know. Um, good. So maybe we'll just connect that with with our uh, what we did on on Monday. So we're gonna start off from side control. So I'm here in side control and Dave has an underhook, okay? So when he has the underhook, I like to post my hand on the hip and come up, possibly do like a top spin to his back. But if he gets up to, up to his knees, I'm gonna have to defend this single leg right over here. So I look for the Kimura. This leg is posted and I put all my weight on him right here. I'm gonna grab his wrist, come underneath, get a good Kimura. And then I almost allow the takedown by sitting and putting my foot in front of me as I pull up on the arm. Pull. Break, and then we come over here. Let's spin a little bit. So here, once again, we, we went over, like if I want to finish the Kimura, I'll step over his head and get inside his arm, and then start coming up. If he turns into me hard, I lift, I put my knee inside to take the back. It's one where we're stuck in this position, Sometimes I can go for like a crucifix here. So sometimes I can get underneath them and I can start bringing one foot then passing it off to the other. Now, I would pass the hand, come under the neck, and we're in the same position we would just work. So we get stuck in this position. He's not really getting up yet because maybe he's looking to do some sort of counter right over here. So if I can, I'm going to start getting my, my feet inside until I can pass it off. Then I'll pass the hand off and the head. All right. I'm not too worried about getting under his chin yet. I'm just going to put my hand right here. Then I'm going to go flat like this, open his arm up. Now I can start coming underneath. I'm probably going to get a good rear naked choke from there. Yeah, can you go over why you open the forearm as opposed to using the inside leg? Because some guys that maybe are good at defending this might force you to to take this one, taste the wrong leg instead of the outside leg. Yeah, so the, with the inside leg, you don't have the opportunity to to open the arm up. So if when we're here, let's just say I'm here, and I have this figure form, people think, oh, okay, I have good position here, but I'm not able to really open his arm up. Even if I turn my knees all the way over here, Dave can still start getting low on me. And can turn into me. Exactly. As soon as I switch, I make it a lot easier for me to open his elbow out. Now when Dave tries to move away from me, I can attack the arm, which brings him in. It's almost like a, it's like a magnet. You start sucking them in that way. So using that outside leg is the only way to pull the arm. The person can now curl the arm. Like right here, he can curl his arm and protect it. And it's like I can, if I arch my hips like an arm bar, this doesn't really affect him too much. I can do a reverse homo plata, which we'll go over in a minute, but um, that's going to require a lot of extra movement. So if I don't have to, I'll come here first. Now I can open up the arm. It's really far from my body. Now he's got to come in. He can't run away. He can't do all the escapes that he's going to need in order to, um, to escape the position. So the reverse omoplata is really like one of the only other moves submission-wise I use from here. And that's with, when you're trapping with this inside, inside leg. A lot of times you get it when, um, when we're in the top turtle position. So let's look at that. So I'm here. I slide. I step over, but then Dave goes to hide his hand, and now I'm here, and we're stuck in this. And I can't get to it with this outside leg. He's already hitting it. 
All right. Now, what I'm going to end up doing here is I'm actually going to go back to my knees and I'm going to put my head on the other side, right over here, right over his shoulder to keep it. I want to like bite down on his arm. And then I'm going to let go and reach in between his legs and grab his thigh, if it's available, or just reach in between the legs. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look over my shoulder and I'm going to roll. I'm going to take him with me. Let's see if we can scoot in so everyone can see. So when I rolled, I'm, I'm grabbing this leg. My leg is still over his wrist, and I'm figure fouring just to trap it. At this point, I like to switch arms here to keep him pinned, and I'm going to start reaching around to keep him pinned, either here or underneath. Most of the time, I'm going to go under his shoulder and over his head. Now I do like a technical stand-up. I step on the mat, drag my hips backwards as my head goes forward, and then I'm going to keep moving as if I'm going to go up to north-south. So, like maybe, like if you, a lot of people recognize this position, like a uh, position now, I would sometimes step over him now. It doesn't work. I put my hand on the mat. I go to north-south. I'm just doing all that. with his wrist trapped in my figure four. So I'm here, I use this, I, can, I control this leg to make sure he's not gonna be able to get up. And I start scooting my hips back, bringing my head forward, and we get the tap. So let's look at that again with the roll. And you don't need to roll. Sometimes if you're already on your back, you can actually do it when you're on your back already. So open I'm able to step over he hides the hand all right so now I'm gonna start putting my head all the way over here I'm trying to like be nice and tight over his shoulder so he, he doesn't limp arm out especially no gi where it gets slippery and then I reach underneath I'm gonna kind of look away do a forward roll and then I look to catch his leg as we roll Boom. Now we're going to just kind of scoot away this way. And now, I mean, even if I lose the arm, I still get side control, which is okay. But ideally, I want to be here. Post the leg. And a nice submission. You picked great guys to work shoulder locks with. <laughs> <laughs> Super tight. That's all right. But it's very effective regardless. It's a... Uh, even people with flexible shoulders, they really can't escape it that easily. There's no like obvious escapes. It's not like an arm bar we can hitchhiker out or anything. Uh, let me do the same thing when I have you in crucifix and I'm on my back. So same thing. So we're in the same scenario. And then what ends up happening is I'm, I'm unable to trap this leg. So I start looking for a, um, looking for his leg again. So what I like to do here so I like to try to hook on his leg here, underneath. And I'm going to elevate it up so I can catch it. Now I'll let go, allow his head to escape, and it puts me in the same position. So that's going to be the setup. Let's move a little bit closer to the camera here. So you can kind of see. So right here, I have, I have my leg figure forward and I'm having trouble um, switching the arm because he's hiding the arm. So what I like to do is I like to use like a butterfly hook and just pull his leg up and then catch his leg. Now I'll let go of his head. Most people want their head to the mat anyway, so I'm gonna let go of it. But I have this, so if Dave tries to get up, I can keep him flat for a second. Then I come on the inside over here and I start coming back. Very tight position. Obviously, if I lose the arm, we still have options for north-south chokes here. We had Brian McLaughlin down for seminar. I taught a lot of good details on the uh, north-south choke, and it's definitely a really good uh, good attack, especially from that co combo of attack. Um, trying to think other things that we would normally work from this position. I mean. The, the crucifix, we usually work top and bottom, and we use it to, to defend against other escapes. Now, what do you do if you feel that you're losing the position? Do you ever go back to the Kimura trap? Or do you just... 
That's Yanni a, doesn't lose the position. No, I lose positions all the time, of course. But uh, um, the Kamora trap can, can can definitely help you a little bit there. Like if um if we're on our back, right? So what ends up happening is if the person's head is too low and I'm unable to switch, the Kamora is back. I can I can go for the Kamora here. And it all depends on which way Dave wants to escape. If he tries to turn into me here, this way, I can start lifting up and then start reattacking the arm if I don't if I didn't lose it. If uh, he tries to just get up and turn towards me, I can go like this. I can use the Kimura in the opposite direction. This way, because if I don't, if I'm still looking to choke him here and he's able to turn and grab my legs, I'm gonna give up. Side control, possibly, you know? Yeah, that literally happens to me every time. I try <laughs> to do crucifix, and that, that, that's the detail, lifting an arm away Yeah, from me. so if I, come, if I come here, and the person's starting to get up, I just come here. I make sure that they're unable to turn. It slows them down, and then I can start coming here, attack this arm a little bit, get back. This is obviously the best position I can get to. I'm able to control both sides of the hips. The crucifix is a... It's a nice attack because it, t it traps the arm, right? And you're already up by the neck, controlling the arm, but I'm not blocking both sides of the hips. That's the ultimate flaw of the crucifix, is that it's a great position, but it has its flaws, and if you are too in love with it, you end up overexposing yourself and end up like letting people out. Now, I love the position. But I feel that sometimes people give up the back too easily because maybe they're familiar with escaping the back where they're not so familiar with escaping the crucifix. Yes. So, obviously, if you can take the back, choose the back. Choose the back. That's my opinion. If you can take the back, you choose the back because that's where you have more control over someone. And you can slowly start where, you know, you got to take your time, slowly start tra trapping the arm get underneath the chin and stuff like that. Well, and if you have a tournament, point, crucifix obviously. is nothing. There's no yes. points with the crucifix. Yeah. <laughs> crucifix is like, you can put someone in so much danger and then you can end up just losing. I, 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 I remember seeing, I, I feel like Dylan had a match like that once where he had the guy in the crucifix for a while and ended up losing on points uh, because he never put both hooks in. And it's a bummer because the person can come up and actually sometimes they can count that as a takedown or a sweep, so you have to watch, you know? So... Obviously, that, that's why they give you the points up for the back, because you have a little more control. There's less avenues to move their hips. Crucifix is great because it traps their arm. In a fight, it's good because you can, you can sometimes keep the arm trapped while you, you strike, and then using the strikes to get to a slightly better position, you know? So that's one thing. But um, being too much in love with it, you'll be surprised. People who are really good at escapes from the back, it's, they know how to pull their arm out. Make their arms small, you know. Now, um, have you ever studied any of Barrett Yoshida crucifix attacks? Not necessarily. What does okay. he show? What does I he was show? curious. If, I just know that that's one of his favorite positions. He's really good from the crucifix. Yeah, I feel that um, he uses he gets it from other positions, like possibly from. He uses it from almost like a front headlock position. Yeah, I was gonna say that possibly because a lot of times while you're attacking the neck, their hands are in front of you, so. Just figuring out, like, if I'm here sitting on my butt playing like a guillotine, sometimes you can come in and trap the arm and then come up this way. So that, that could be a, a, a strategy, right? So a lot of times we're in a sitting guard, right? Person is playing with their hands, controlling the feet, because they want to try to, like, make an angle or stuff my feet and get their head low. So I'm usually looking for arm drags. When they go to block, because the arm drag, if I can get my head on this side, yeah, exactly. He's going to get his head lower, and I can't take his back. This is when I snap the head. It's like a snap down, just like in wrestling. I come over here, and I come to start looking for a guillotine. That's when he uses his hands, and at that point, I may start using my legs. As long as I can get my knee behind his elbow, I can now turn my knees, open the arm, and start coming here. And then you can go in reverse order too. Sometimes I come here, I start losing the, the arm a little bit, maybe it starts coming back. I can come back into like an arm and guillotine. So let's look at that little setup. It's kind of like a little bit different scenario. So we're here 
and I look for the arm jack. See where his head is? He, he kind of makes it hard for me. So instead, I just let go of the wrist, and I just push his head down as I move. I'm, I'm on the neck. I'm having trouble. He's, he's really making it hard for me to uh, finish the choke. I'll just make sure that my knee is behind his elbow. And I turn. Turn my hips. Change the seatbelt. I'll look at the wrist. Choke if you want to. I like that choke with the arm trap there. That was a very yeah. uncomfortable position. Yeah, it's actually really good with the arm trap because you're already like in a crucifix and they're, they're probably more like, oh, my back, I'm worried my back, about my, my arm, back, I'm yeah. worried about my neck. And then you come back right over the neck. That's why I like the guillotine like in positions when not, where they're not defending it. You know, like, For me to just attack a guillotine on someone, they, all they got to do is put their head in the chest and shrug your shoulders, suddenly you don't have a guillotine. But when you're attacking a different position, your position is higher than them anyway. Okay. Yeah, definitely guillotines are um, real good, especially obviously in no gi. But the mo most important thing I think a lot of people have, most important detail a lot of people don't realize for a guillotine is you should be only going for guillotines when you're higher than someone. Like sometimes I see people in close guard, let's say. Dave's sitting back and then people are just looking for a guillotine like this. Dave's higher than me. So all he's got to do is just stay higher than me. I'll never get it. Look at my elbow. It's far away from my body. If I'm going for a guillotine, for like a hip bump sweep here and I get higher than Dave momentarily and I drop down. I didn't even wrap his neck yet because I used my elbow to break his posture. And then I can put my hand wherever I want. I can attack the neck. I move back a little bit. So, this, this is the no-no, because look at my elbow, so far away from my body. Now I can start looking for his neck, because my elbow is on the other side of his head. His head is now lower than my chest. If he tries to pick his head up, all I gotta do is lean. Then I can start looking to connect my hands. And look, that's like, Having that awareness, knowing that like, okay, their head's down, I can go for it, it's almost no risk, you know, mm -hmm. I can go for it. Whereas I go this way, I'm just using a lot of energy. I'm, I'm trying to reach with my elbow separated from my body, and I'm just using strength at that point, hoping that, hoping to like catch him sleeping, but in reality, a lot of times you just tire yourself out. I'm definitely gonna watch that detail later. Yeah. Yeah. Coming here and getting that elbow in. From the arm jack, you just get up. To that. That's why the from the crucifix is really good because you're already higher than them. Mm -hmm. So if they're if they start defending the arm again, you can go right back to the neck. How's the chat going? Not too many people watching today. Where are all your fans? <laughs> Do they have jobs? Everybody's working from home. Well, Emmett said he was going to log in, but Emmett, how are you doing, Emmett? <laughs> he would have had questions. He's like, "Can I type?" I said, "Yes, you can yes, type." Yes, absolutely. That's what we want. We want. Some interaction. So it would have been interesting to see who he came up as, if he came up as core or to the death. I don't know which where. One he would yeah, I don't know which one he would have clicked on. Oh, you get to available. choose. You could choose. Yeah, yeah, you can just choose. Yeah, a lot of times I feel like when I open up a web browser, it's just whatever I was on last. Yeah, it, it's easy to select, and he even might have a user on there, just oh, for good. for school with all the homeschooling and everything. Yeah, I know that's like a big thing. I know they're all big on Zoom right now at the, at the school, so. I, yeah, I don't know how they're doing it all. I'm at work. Oh, wow. Yeah. When I get home, they're done. School's they're done. already That's done, good. yeah. That's good. That means he's doing his work. Yeah, yeah. That is good. They're not waiting until like 6 o'clock. No, no, they have to get it done. There's deadlines for everything. It's crazy. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's really That's crazy. <laughs> so, but I do know that there are a few people from CORE that are planning on logging in later and watching. Great. Um, some of the people that were working, Ron said he was going to log on and harass us for a little bit. Um, I think he was on so, the other day, right? Yes. So there's definitely going to be some people watching later, for sure. Yeah, so th this topic of the crucifix I wanted to go over because it connects very well with the Kimura. Uh, last week we were working on a lot of guard stuff, so today I wanted to do a little bit from top. And honestly, like sometimes we don't get a chance to go over a crucifix because I do focus more on putting both hooks in. Mm -hmm. Or... We practice, like even the Kimura trap, we usually focus on just specific side control attacks. So doing kind of both, it's a, it's a good complement to, uh, to the, you know, to a regular curriculum, you know. So that's another thing I like 
thinking, of course, I'm always looking to make the curriculum as comprehensive as possible, but it becomes harder sometimes because you have certain things that don't fall in the regular category. It's like 50-50 is a great example. 50-50. I don't know where to teach that because I do like I do think it's important to learn because a lot of people get hurt getting out of it. Like uh, had a student once get hurt their knee, hurt their knee, yep. hurt their knee at uh, what was it? Um, Grappling Industries. Mm -hmm. Scott hurt his knee at Grappling Industries. Yeah, because they allow all leg locks pretty much. At well, Blue it was Gi, but he didn't. Yeah, Blue Belt. You're allowed to do knee bar stall holds at Blue Belt. You know. Yeah. And so it's different and unusual. And then the guy you went against actually was pretty good at 50-50 and he tried just getting up to make sure he wasn't giving up points and ended up hurting his knee. So it's like, I like it's teaching common. it, you know? But then it's like, it's not as important as knowing how to pass the guard, how to escape yeah. side control. <laughs> so for you, for Crucifix, like when you get in it, what is the most common thing that happens? Is you take the back? Uh, basically, when I get it in it, it depends on if I'm top or bottom. On top, I usually pretty much always take the back. But you're not ended up like hanging out there. Like it's kind of no. I'm you're not always getting stuck in there. No, it's hard to get really stuck in there because I do have the arm trapped mm -hmm. and I am threatening the arm. Mm -hmm. So I'm making them think, oh my 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 arm. And then I go back to the neck. The gi even better because you can do that single wing choke. You can be completely in a single wing choke and the person can't escape because your arm is blocking their head from touching the mat. Even cross collar, they can still put their head on the mat. But if you can get behind their head. Now what if it's Ed and he's doing one of these clamp down things that he does and you're having trouble swimming the arm? So this is when you're at bottom? Or top? When, on, when you're in the controlling position of the crucifix and you're trying to do that wing choke with the gear. Okay, so, so the, the attack guy's you clamping got, down, clamping down. You, you just gotta, you gotta give him something to not clamp, to... People have to, you gotta give them choices. They can either choose to be doing this or they're gonna give up their neck. So if you're able to open the arm up more, then their, their, their neck okay. will be more open. So it's just about attacking more at the same yeah. time. Yeah, they have to, they, you gotta give them a choice. If they have no choice, then it's a stalemate. Okay. You know, it becomes a stalemate easy. It's easy to stalemate someone. But that's usually because you're just thinking like too linearly. You, want, you gotta be thinking, all right, I got him trapped here. Now I gotta make sure that here and here, there's no way possible to get out. Get out. When I close this off, suddenly they start wanting to, to do something. As soon as they move, that movement might be enough for me. Or maybe I can slowly suffocate them or slowly scare, their, uh, scare them with the arm that they have to open up their neck. That's got to be the number one. People want to turn and face you. Yeah. That's what happens to me is that when they get out of it, it's, and that's what you said, it's getting that more grip back, opening them back up and slowing them down. Yeah. That's definitely what I'm not doing. Yeah, they're probably able to turn and face it. And if, you, if you're if you too focused on the neck when there's back, so for me to choke Dave, important detail here, I have to have, it doesn't matter whether I have hooks or not, I have to have this. My chest has to be touching him. Now I can wrap around his neck. If I try to choke Dave like this, and there's nothing touching the back of his neck, he can just turn and look at me at any time. This is like a principle that is true no matter if I have his arm trapped, whether I put, even if I have both hooks in, but I'm a little bit off. Like sometimes people have hooks like this, and they're just like, oh, I'll just go for the choke right here, you know? Well, Marcelo did it. <laughs> you can, you can get, get away with it. But the thing is with Marcelo, he had the hands connected, and then he was moving in the other way, so he was like closing his elbows together. Okay. But if you, a lot of times, if you if you go for this and then you don't square your hips, this is when the arm comes out. There's always going to be limits. Some people are just going to be strong enough to be able to finish that choke. You know, I'm sure. I'm sure if Gordon connects his hands and he's not perfectly mm -hmm. on their back, he's strong enough to finish that choke. You know. So now that we've gone over the top position in Crucifix, what is your favorite escape from Crucifix? Mm. Do you, is your favorite to turn towards the legs? Basically, ever... yeah, it's basically gonna always be that. So, first off, if Dave is on top and he's, he manages to trap my arm, I have to do what I just showed and I have to go to my head. Now, let's spin this one. Now, the, the thing is, it's like, I know that I'm in danger here. 
So I have to do my best to kind of turn and look at my hand and try to get my hand low. Sometimes, sometimes I, I manage to get my hand inside and I'll grab my own leg. And now I have to try to grab over here. Obviously he's doing a good job here, so I may have to circle. It's like a fight here. This is the best way to stay, trying to get up this way. Okay. Um, if I have trouble getting up this way because you have my elbow too trapped, but I do manage to grab here, then I start pulling my elbow out. And this is where I can put your arm back down to the mat. At this point, you have to, yeah, you have to do this and open. Now I can't turn. Now I have to go here. Okay. <laughs> my next step would be to come like here. Like you did the other day. Exactly. So they do connect together. So right. if you know how to, once you start escaping the crucifix, you want to connect it with other escapes until you're finally in a position that you know. You know. So you don't. You're not a fan of putting your back to the mat and trying the backwards roll? Um, you know what? I've never tried that. Um, okay. Okay. Show, show me what you mean. Oh. You know, <laughs> like I don't so know if I can roll right now. So it's when they're just controlling the arm because I won't be able to get, get your back all the way to the mat and then backwards roll. Right, right. But from here, if you can get your head to the floor, this blocks me. You can well, probably you have just... To reverse on the plot of grip. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I can't go anywhere now. Oh, okay. I see what you mean. So, so it'd be, right? It'd be this one. And now if you turn my... You should be able to just get up, right? Just turn Okay, it. so don't even worry about the roll at this yeah, point. Yeah, at this point you can probably come to here. Generally speaking, I know, I know that when people escape my crucifix, it's usually because they're able to get my knees together and turn them facing this way. Instead okay. of turning this way, they turn facing then. Okay. It just... That's that's their way out. So uh, just always think that like that that's going to be your 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 path too. You know that's the All best right. way to possibly escape is always facing the legs. If you have both of the legs like a double leg, then you get a nice escape from there. You know. So to reiterate, when you're making that come over grip, you're just trying to pull the arm over their head, or is it out to the side, or just away? From um, it it's going to be so if they try to turn into you, you pull it in the opposite direction. All right. If you have the leg behind them a little bit, then you can start pulling it up and start putting hooks in. But if you don't have, if you're not under the lower back at all, I don't know if I can even really properly pull. If I pull it up this way, Dave can still. Yeah, I feel like this will get this position because I can't pop properly elevate his elbow. Like I feel like his el I barely am around his elbow. So you want the hand to the floor and then the elbow up? Yeah, I want to be like this. And I focus on this part because now, even though my knees are facing the wrong way, Dave cannot get up towards my legs. He cannot. I'm going to be in a position to attack his arm. He will probably go back to connecting his hands or something. And then I can fix my position. So here. But that's a very active position, though. You're not just putting his hand and wait, fighting it off. You're putting no, his hand and here, and then I'm, I'm starting to get up. And then, most likely, he's going to go the other way, so then I can go back to attacking. If not, if he allows me to get up, I'm going to be in a finishing position. I'm going to be able to finish the Kimura. Okay. Because you're, you're actually in, like, right here. He's doing nothing. I'll just come back. I'm already over his arm. All i got to do is clear his head. And now I'm in position to finish. I love how you let go of the Kimura grip. <laughs> <laughs> you should feel how tight my shoulders are. <laughs> Dave, Christina says hi. Hi. <laughs> nice, nice of you to join us. Excellent. Christine or Christina? Christina. All right. Ah, okay. It's, it's too close. Would have been nice if she had like a question or something. Do like you that. have a question, Christina? <laughs> yeah. I have a question. How are your abs feeling today? I'm pretty sore. You guys were doing abs? We did, uh, yeah. So the adults, oh. I'm trying to do one day a week where we're doing some cardio exercises or some nice, kind of physical, nice. physical activity. Cool. So, yeah. Well, what was your routine? Oh, uh, we did some static strength training for one minute rounds. We did some wall sits, um, planks, stuff like that. Yeah, you get really sore for a lot longer when you just are sitting and doing nothing all day. I know, yeah, my back's killing me right now. Yeah. She says no questions, but no she's questions. sore. And Christine's here too. Oh, hi. <laughs> What's funny is actually the first week that Lauren did the yoga, and I've been doing the yoga with her, I was at... My uh, my neck got all jacked up that, that that night. I was like, oh my god, because we were doing like 
stuff like this walking up and mm. and uh and of course i'm trying to keep up with her because she's doing like she pulled she does like a full version of the pose and i'm doing like 50 percent of it well, i saw the picture she's like totally twisted up yeah and I was like, I wish <laughs> well that's why she can escape from that position right <laughs> Being flexible definitely could help with yeah. jiu-jitsu. I definitely am enjoying doing some of these yoga. The only thing is, is like I got to do it more often to get the true benefit, I think. This Friday, we'll be back. I think Lauren said we're going to be doing back arches or stuff like where you're doing stuff like that. I don't know. That's like one of my worst positions. <laughs> 3 o'clock? I'll see you then. <laughs> nice. Oh, wait. Are we going to be busy? No, we're doing it at night. Okay. Oh, nice. What, are you guys recording again? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, guys, you guys are busy with these um, podcasts, making sure that we have one for the next couple of weeks. So. Pretty sure we're having a guest soon. Yes. <laughs> Whoa. Are we f- officially announcing it? Possibly. We'll, we'll just tease possibly? it. Possibly. <laughs> it could happen, right? It could happen. Just leave it open. We'll leave it open. All right. Ed, you know where he lives in case we have to track him down? I have his address. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> He'll catch me. Awesome. Oh, well, thanks, guys, for... Uh, Tune it in. We usually try to keep it around 45 minutes, so we're, we're roughly there. Um, crucifix, great position. It's Like I said, I like to use it both as an attack when the person is not allowing you to put both hooks in. Or as a counterattack when they're almost escaped. And then that's what's good about the back position. Even when they're escaped, they're still in a really bad position. Mm-hmm. You know, don't, don't ever just allow the person to just reset. That, that, that's just like... You, you, you put a lot of energy to get to that position, make them use all their energy to escape, you know, catch them on the, along the way. So we're going to the back, we're not hanging out in the crucifix, and I love the detail on attacking the arm from the beginning, how you use your knee yeah. to peel it out. That Turning was a great it detail. Away. It is a good detail. I, I started picking that up a little bit watching um, Hoffa teaching some certain back takes where he, he walks the guy's arm so far up and then he can put hooks in. Okay. And I think maybe maybe Donner shows it. I know in his back attack system he has some details on the crucifix, which I may may rewatch. I think he shows a lot of opening the arm up as well. Okay. You know, uh, obviously Marcelo's guys are really good. I know Joel Burgess, very good at. Uh, I know Bernardo had him on his YouTube channel. Mm-hmm. Had a really good details on on the crucifix. He's like well known for that. I've trained with him actually. Right before Nogi Pants a few years ago. Real tough. Real tough. Awesome. I'll see you guys in the next one.